Don't let the name fool you. The Slayer shot isn't quite as intimidating as it sounds. In fact, it's actually surprisingly gentle. It gets its name from the Slayer Espresso Machine because of its uniquely engineered two-stage brew paddle that utilizes a needle valve, pre-infusion, and full brew modes to achieve what is known as, at least in some coffee nerd circles, as the Slayer shot. Call it what you will, you can call it the raining blood shot for all I care, but essentially it's just a standard double with a long pre-infusion. Pre-infusion, for those who maybe don't know, is just a low pressure wetting of the coffee puck before cranking things up to full pressure. In theory or in practice, whichever camp you happen to belong to, this allows the puck to release CO2 and gently expand in the basket, resulting with less chance of channels, cracks, fissures, holes, or other issues that can cause uneven extraction but also it's able to highlight different flavors and textures than a straight traditional nine bar pole. So in this video, I'll go over the Slayer shot as they describe it and their directions for pulling one, how I've modified it to work on my GS3 and how you can modify it to work on any machine that has pre-infusion, flow control and or pressure control. And of course, what I like about it, what I don't like about it and where I think it really makes the coffee shine. As you can see, I don't own a Slayer. But the Slayer shot isn't proprietary. We're not talking about Apple here, we're talking about espresso machines. And you can absolutely utilize those techniques on a GS3 MP and essentially any machine that allows you to control flow or pressure. All you really need to do is understand and follow Slayer's simple outline of step by step instructions on how to achieve the Slayer shot. And lucky for us all, they've laid them out in a nice little flowchart on their website, which I'll link to in the description below for those who are more text based learners. The biggest differences we're looking at from your standard espresso is a finer grind and an extended shot time. The Slayer shot essentially doubles a traditional 25 second pull, aiming for something in the 45 to 55 second range. But unlike most long extractions like the Alange or the Lungo for instance, it doesn't really aim for a larger yield. Slayer instead recommends starting around the tried and true 1 to 2 ratio. This brings me to what I would consider the defining factor of the Slayer shot, and that is pre-infusion, and we're not talking about just any old pre-infusion. Slayer aims for a specific flow rate between 40 and 60 grams per 30 seconds, adjusted using their needle valve. Since the Slayer machine utilizes flow and my machine pressure, I had to first determine how much pressure was needed to pre-infuse at the rate they describe. The only way to know this is by trial and error, and by seeing how long it takes for the basket face to become fully saturated with coffee. And when it reaches that point, the Slayer goes to full 9 bar brew pressure and runs the shot until the aimed yield is met. From there, it's all about dialing it in based on taste, just like you would a standard shot of espresso and using all of the same techniques. For example, if the shot is too acidic, grind finer and increase brew time. And if it's too bitter, grind coarser and reduce the time. And if you're looking for a more in-depth tutorial on dialing in a light roast, I'll link my video on that exact topic above. As always, brew temp should be adjusted based on the roast of the coffee, and Slayer recommends a good starting point for most medium roasts to be about 93 degrees Celsius or 199 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, so after pulling these regularly over the past few weeks on a variety of different coffees, these are my takeaways on the Slayer shot. For one, it's clearly designed for those light to medium third wave roasts that are harder to over extract with a long contact time. That's not to say you can't pull these on those darker roasts, but you should definitely drop your brew temperature and maybe consider pulling it towards the lower end of the shot time around 45 seconds. One thing worth considering is you will lose some temp as the espresso flows, so consider bumping it up a degree or two if your extractions seem lacking. In terms of puck prep, it more or less remains the same and you should get your grinder to do most of the work, but I did notice that Slayer uses IMS style baskets that have a reduced number of holes and a slightly more confined face when compared to the baskets that I currently use. In testing, the IMS baskets do seem to run a little smoother in general on this style of shot, but don't seem to make much of a difference in the cup. On the topic of extraction, regardless of its extended time, the Slayer shot numbers don't seem to exceed, and in fact are a little lower, than what I would get on most other shot styles that I make regularly. Now of course when it comes to talking about taste, we start going down a path of personal preferences and experiences. In the cup, I found the best outcomes on those really wild and funky coffees. 
It mellows out the brightness without detriment to the overall balance, and allows the nuanced flavors that I often get in the finish to be more upfront since they aren't being muddled down by that first punch of intensity. On the flip side, I found it didn't really produce a better cup in terms of texture, balance, or flavor on, for lack of a better term, your more common espresso blends or less complex coffees. Don't get me wrong, the shots were still good and all, but the differences between a straight 6-9 bar pull and the Slayer shot were pretty minimal, and didn't strike me as worth the time, effort, and focus to pull a Slayer shot versus just your standard pull. In the end, I found the Slayer shot to actually be worth the time and the effort for most coffees, and it actually made some of the tastiest shots I've had in a while, especially when it comes to those coffees that I generally go for, those light roasted, highly nuanced and acidic single origin coffees, and those that are riding on that current trend towards experimental processing. But the big downside is accessibility, because not all machines give you the tools you need to make it happen. Regardless, the use of long pre-infusions really does seem to make a significant difference in the cup. I most definitely came into this a skeptic, much like the turbo shot, and came out the other side a believer. Both of which produce amazing shots with times ranging from 15 to 50 seconds, which creates a lot of questions for me on the topic of contact time, but that's a video for another day. So I definitely recommend if you have a machine that's capable of pressure or flow profiling, this one is absolutely worth a try. And with that said, I'm going to wrap this one up and pass the conversation on to you. What are your thoughts on the Slayer shot? What are your thoughts on long pre-infusion? And of course, what other styles of espresso should I do a deep dive into next? Drop your answers to those questions and any others in the comment section down below, and I'll see y'all next week. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Hit that little bell button for notifications of new videos posted every Friday. Check out my Instagram at Spromethius for content throughout the week, my blog at Spromethius.com, my coffee at littlegiant.coffee, and as always, stay caffeinated. Pony boy.